Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to this tutorial where we are learning how to create data loaders for different scenarios of data augmentations in PyTorch. And this is the second video where we'll see how to create data loaders for the second scenario of data augmentation that is when we'll use data augmentation to increase the data set size. And in this video, we'll also see how we can define a custom collate function and where the need of defining a custom collate function comes in. Uh, but before that, if you haven't watched the first video, I would highly recommend you to go and watch the first video because this video, the code of this video will also be uh, built up on the first video and also some concepts. And uh, so if you remember in the first video, we uh, we discussed about the scenario one where we are just doing a augmentation like one image and one augmented image and how to create data loaders for this and we were doing data augmentation using the uh, torch vision transform function in this video also we will use the same transform function but we'll cover the scenario two that is when we have one uh, when we want to increase the uh, data set size that is we have one input image and we apply different augmentation and we have multiple augmented image and in that way we can increase the data set size okay so let's get started <music> So now, uh, you know, we want to increase the data set size. So what we'll do is uh, whenever we apply augmentation, the new augmented image, we will save it as a new image so that we increase the data set size. So for this, we have to define a list of transformations because each transformation will yield a new augmented image. So I have this transformation defined here. And so T0 is basically, I'm, I mean, this is just a resize function, although I'm using the transform, uh, you know, torch vision transform to do that. So this is basically to get the original image. Then this is the first augmentation that I'm applying, random perspective. Second augmentation is random crop. But one thing to also note is that just check after your transformation, the image size and property remains as you intended. So for example, uh, say my network takes an image input of 128 by 128 but after I do a crop say of 96 it becomes a size 96 so now I'm, I'm again resizing it to bring it to 128 by 128 then the third transformation is random rotation and then I define a list of transformation so it's not like a chain of transformation it's a separate transformation stored as the elements of list so once we have defined the list of transformation, let's see what changes we can do in the data generator function, uh, you know, which will, uh, yeah, uh, which will give us this, you know, property of increasing the data set size. Now, so this, this thing that I'm discussing is for the first uh, scenario. So if you remember, uh, we can create this data generator function in two ways. The one is when we initialize our collection of data by reading the image beforehand and storing it as data and label pairs and another is when we don't have enough memory we don't read it beforehand we just store the image name and label pair and then we read it on the go when uh, when we need to fetch the data okay so let's take the first scenario where we have already read the data and uh, then let's see in this case how we can use uh, you know this data augmentation to increase the data set size so uh, let's go here so if you remember this uh, data set loader function we will have this init where we define our you know paths and what transformation to apply and then we had this helper function of load data which basically loads the data so in the previous case if you see what we were doing is we were reading our csv file which has our uh, image name and labels and then while loading like while initialization only we were reading the images we were getting the label and then we were appending it as an image label pair okay so this is uh, yeah after applying transformation so this is was you know one input and then one augment uh, which was passed to a transformation so one augmented image and then we were appending it as an image label pair now here we need multiple so what we'll do will define as a list so uh, you know we'll read the image once 
and then for each of the transformation that we have defined in our transformation list we'll apply the transformation and we'll save the augmented image as a you know new image label pair to our you know list of collection of data so in this way we have one image but after applying four augmentations now we will have four images appended you know in this list and in this way we increase the data set size okay so let's see when we run this code what happens so let me run this from beginning and yep so yeah so this is the transformation we have defined and then this is the uh, you know the data generator object so i'm passing all the paths and that transformation is a list and let's see so now if you see the length of data set would be 1600 now it's taking some time to load so if you remember uh, the data which i have is 200 cats and 200 dogs that is 400 samples and that's what we were seeing here length of data set was 400 but here because we have uh, for each each data we will have four images one original and three augmented so it will be like a 400 into 4 1600 samples so 1600 data set you can see the data set size is now increased and we can obviously visualize uh, some of the images so this is the you know the augmented image the number 10th one because it's cropped and all now then we can use this uh, this data object to create our data loader and then it's it's basically the same way we give the batch size or uh, we give the data generator object and then we can load one of the batch let's run again and you will see 12 images so few are original few are augmented because we have appended in such a way you know but yeah so this is for the first scenario where we already read the data beforehand okay and uh, then we simply have to do the transformation and do the uh, append in the init function itself you know here while uh, defining the init of our data generator we simply uh, do the uh, do the uh, appending and then we have this uh, increased data set now let's consider the second scenario where suppose we are not able to load the data beforehand so we just have image name and label pairs so we have to do this increasing in data set size through augmentation on the go like whenever we fetch this data from the get item okay so let's see how we can do it here so uh, if you remember the previous case the first the first case what we were doing is when we are loading the data we are simply say we have the image name we have the label and we were simply appending as image name and label pair and then we when we have to fetch the data then we were reading the image name label and then we were uh, reading the image actually opening the image and then applying transformation to that image and returning image label pair when we are fetching like on the go now what how we can do it here let's see so here what happens uh, we in the loading part of the data we will still have the same like previous we will have the image name we'll have the label and we'll have the image name and label pair but when we have we are fetching the uh, data at that moment we are reading this image and at that moment only then we have to apply the transformations and increase our data set size so for example say we we want to fetch at certain idx so we'll read the image name and label pair from from our collection of data set and then we'll open the image and on this image then we'll apply our list of transformations okay so we'll have data and labels so for all these augmented image the labels would remain same you know because uh, you know you're applying aug augmentation say you're applying augmentations to this but this all are still cat so we can simply use the same label so what we'll do uh, we'll loop over the transformation we'll apply transformation or the augmentation to this uh, original image and we'll append it here so we'll we have this four transformations uh, one original and three augmentation so four times we'll do that and for labels we'll simply repeat appending the same label okay now this is a list and we'll just convert in a tensor so that we'll have you know four suppose cat is zero so instead of one zero there will be four zero 
and then this data which we have will then stack it as a tensor okay so that uh, the shape becomes 4 uh, 4 by 3 by 128 by 128 okay and yeah this becomes 4 uh, uh, 4 by 4 oh yeah the labels for 4 yeah it, it would be 4 by 1 oh 4 by 4 yeah okay so this is the change for the second second kind that is during the on the go like get item you have to define this uh, this extra function that it will uh, it will read once it will apply the transformation so that it increase the data set size so for each image it will create four image and then we will return it as a you know as a tensor of shape 4 by 3 by 128 by 128 now uh, we can run this let's see but that's there will be a use of collate function coming here first let's define this okay so we'll define our transformation so now now if you see the length of data set is 400 it's because uh, it, it it returns the length of whatever collections we have in your in our init function so here we have just 400 only because we did not read here and appended anything here just the 400 original images that's why it's showing 400 okay and the images uh, the, the these are not read yet so now what we'll do uh, if we let's see now if we uh, try to fetch this data one of the data at index 10 now you'll see as we defined here for one image it will return four images right because we have you know this four transformations so here if you can see the shape is 4 by 3 by 128 by 128 and there are four labels so this is the cat and you can see the original image uh, the random perspective random crop and rotation and all our label is four so although one image the data set increased by four now how to create data loader for this okay how we can do that so uh, let's see what the default collate function do so if you remember uh, if you remember the role of get item let's let's see here I think I defined it somewhere here yeah yeah so this when we are fetching item from here it will take it, it will return you know one item you know so one item means 1 by 3 by 224 by 224 but now when how we have modified this get item function is it will return 4 by 3 by 224 by 224 so when we call a data loader and there is a default collate function so it simply stack four of the items fetched from here so if it was you know simply you know 3 by 224 by 224 like once I'm, I'm just writing one to show the batch size so it becomes five if there are batch size is five five by three by 224 by 224 but if the shape is already four by three by 224 by 224 then it becomes five by four let, let's let me explain through here you see here so here the shape of one item itself is four by three by 128 by 128 and when we create data loader and we say we want 12 of those so the shape becomes 12 by 4 by 3 by 128 by 128 but what is the nature of uh, you know the data that will feed for training is basically if there are you know uh, if there are 12 images and for each image we have 4 then we have total of 48 images so the shape should be 48 by 3 by 128 by 128 stating that there are 48 images in this batch so th let's see how we can change it that's where you know default collate function comes in so uh, sorry the, the custom collate function so if this is the default collate function if you call the default collate function it's it will basically give you this shape 12 by 4 by 3 by 120 so 12 batch size and each sample is 4 by 3 by 128 by 128 and even the uh, labels are actually 12 by 4 you know because for one item we have four labels and for 12 items we have 12 by 4 but actually there are total of now 48 images and then 48 labels so let's see how we can modify it by defining a custom collate function so this is the default collate function which will give us the batch of this shape 
12 by 4 by 3 by 128 by 128. So we will read the batch size, this number of augmentation, which is 4, channels 3, height and width. And now what we'll simply do is we'll reshape it by, uh, you know, the number of images as 12 into 4. So batch size into number of augmentation, channels is 3 and height and width is same. And for the labels, again, uh, it should be 48 labels. So we'll simply multiply 12 into 4, that is batch size into number of augmentation. So this become our custom collate function and now when we pass, when we create uh, our data loader, we'll pass our data generator function and then we'll pass our custom collate function and batch size will be 12. Okay. So now if you see the shape of your batch, it will say 48. We gave, we gave 12, but because, you know, on the go, it's uh, creating four images for each. It becomes 48 by 3 by 128 by 128 and the labels there are 48 labels so you can also print and you can see it will be repeated uh, L -A -B -E -L, and you will see yeah, 0 4 times 1 and this and these are the images that you can see 48 images okay and then uh, you can even shuffle this tensions tenses i mean suppose if you uh, if you feel you know there are four uh, kind of repeated of similar labels then once we have got our batch we can also shuffle it using random permutation we simply shuffle our data and uh, label and data for each batch and in that way you know uh, they will get shuffled so you can i can show you by printing the labels and we'll see it won't be seen so yeah oh oh is it okay oh okay i have renamed it as label stuff sorry so this was the label where you can see you know it's all uh, continuous like and here we can shuffle it you can see okay so that is for the second type uh, when we are you know reading the image on the go so when we are on the go how to create this uh, increase in data size through augmentation you have to modify this get item function uh, so that it gives us four images but when we do that uh, the data loader property changes a bit because they use a default collate function so they would be giving you a data of shape distancer but we want actually a 48 by 3 by 128 so we define our own collate function and we use that and then we change the uh, property such that the batch size that we get is 48 by 3 by 128 by 128. So I think uh, that's it from this video. I hope you got the idea. I, I will share the notebook. Just go through once. Just try it yourself. And this actually this way you can define any uh, any other way as you will see in the third video we'll define some other way of collate function when we have to do uh, augmentations for only selective classes and not for all classes but for now uh, this was it this was you know how to create a data loader when we want to increase the data set size and we want to do it for both the cases of uh, you know data loader where uh, in one case we were reading the actual data so it, this was pretty straightforward in the initialize function only we just append it and then in the second scenario where in the init function we just have the image name so when we are fetching the data so on the go we have to create this extra augmentation so that's it for now i hope you you learn something and in the next video we will see how we can create data loader for when we do augmentation for selective classes that is for a class uh, dog we don't want to increase the data set size but for class cat we want to increase this data set size so how the uh, how we will code out the data generator function and how we'll define new collate function to handle this scenario we'll see that in next video uh, till then thank you for watching keep learning keep exploring neurons and take care be safe bye bye